Hi, I'm Katya. Welcome back to Total Recall, a show about real life experiences that may or may not have happened at some point in the past. Now, of course, we're talking about RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 2, top four. What's better than three? One more. One plus three equals four. Is that a rhyme? This microphone is an olive branch, and it's not a plea. I'm not pandering for your vote. I'm not a politician. We need to pause and consider, have I been trying to trick you? My behavior in this web series is a little bit different than that of the previous series, Regrets, which was also a recap show of season seven. Things have changed. Years have passed. People have grown, died, fallen by the wayside. But what remains? Squarespace. Am I Sharon Stone? Am I Sharon Stone? I'm serious. Am I Sharon Stone? Who am I? A gorgeous blonde who cannot be trusted. Maybe this whole series was a season long or two month long Sharon Stone impersonation durational performance piece where you wake up in bed with me and I get jealous of your dream lover. Do you know what I'm talking about? We could talk about so many things. We could talk about the incredible main stage challenge in this episode. If I'm gonna go out on a limb, I'm gonna go out on, um, I'd rather go on vacation, but if I'm gonna go out on a limb, I don't know, I mean, well, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see what they did with it. I lived a reality of it that exists in the past. So whether or not that reality comes to fruition in a way that I'm satisfied with, well, you know, that, that's all, that's all in, well, that's also in the past now because that happened last night, even though last night was the night before we're shooting this, which is not anywhere near that date. Yeah. Am I Sharon Stone? I'm an actress, an activist, and a mother. But if you call me mom, I'll slap you. Sharon Stone and Michelle Pfeiffer have never won an Oscar. That's a fact. What's interesting about the casting in Total Recall is that Melina, she's literally horny for justice. Arnold Schwarzenegger's character is horny for Melina, so he's horny for justice by proxy. Sharon Stone is horny for money. Yes. Sharon Stone's horny for money because her motivation is what? She's just doing her job. She was assigned to be his wife. The covering is just salad. My lash became detached. I'm giving continuity flexibility. Right, thank you. Main challenge. <sighs> My favorite in RuPaul's Drag Race history. A master choreographer invited in to do what? Humiliate the girls? No, no. Pit them against each other? No. He is called upon to identify their unique talents in order to create multimedia, live, lip sync, extravaganza dance routine that supports what? The queen of drag in her new bitch track. <sighs> I want you to know my internal temperature is very muggy, muggy, muggy with hotness. If your wig is not snatched, let me talk in drag terms. If your wig is not snatched by this challenge, and I don't even describe what it is, you just watched it. And if you're watching this without any knowledge of Drag Race, do you have, can I have your phone number? Because obviously you like me enough to just not care about the show and just me and I'm very lonely. <laughs> now that you found your wig, let's get back to business. I'm a thinker. My, my curse has always been I'm a thinker and not a doer. What do women do? Think. It is the statistical fact that women think about the behavior of men more than men think about their own behavior. That's not a statistical fact. That's just me going out on a limb. And I think that's actually kind of true. <laughs> My lash fell off, now it's here, and now it's gonna go away. Because guess what? Oprah's fucking lash fell off. Do you remember when Oprah's lash fell off during her show? During, can you imagine? That woman, that makeup artist was probably not only fired, she was probably also given a car that had no brakes and she died in the car crash. Everybody gets a car that's being recalled, so careful. So here's where things start to get interesting. Now, this is all stars. It's not RuPaul's Drag Race, all planets. Okay, these are stars. They're shinier. They're a little less helpful. No, they, they just can't hold a lot besides themselves. What do we know about Alaska? Cold, sometimes really warm, uh, bright colors at times, uh, wild, savage, um, a little bit exotic while also being familiar. Bigger on a map than it is in real life. Out of reach, unless you live there. I'm thinking now, and this is only halfway into this episode, I'm thinking, oh, Interesting. Is she pulling the padge? And what I mean by that is, did she see an opportunity for failure? I'm not saying she failed on purpose, but is she aware of her failure in the previous challenge? 
and how that could be a benefit in cracking the exterior of her perfection because let's face it, she's been burning the challenges one by one by one, declaring at every opportunity her skill set, her talent, her artistry. If I fail here and have a meltdown, will that endear me more to the general public? Because as we all know, as avid watchers of RuPaul's Drag Race, vulnerability is key. During season seven, I was a walking liability of vulnerability, but only aware of that after the fact. I went into season seven, and you just have to trust me. I've changed a lot, but at the time, <laughs> Laganja who? I cried, I heaved, I, 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 <gasps> I used the interview room like a therapist's office. If I had fought with people, yeah, all of that would have been aired, but I fought with myself, yada, yada, cliche. Ooh. So am I overthinking this? Could be, because I know her and she's really nice and she's a very good person. But I also have plenty of information to arm my argument that, well, she knows how to play this game better than anyone else. The point is the RuCall gimmick of this web series is not actually a gimmick. It's worse than that. It's a bad pun. No, 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 it's a serious thing because the whole point I'm trying to make for this series is that it, to illustrate what I went through to season seven, I shot the series in the summer and then every single day for three months, drove myself to the brink of a nervous breakdown trying to comb through those memories to bolster some kind of self-esteem that was dependent upon the airing of it in the future. Does that make any sense to you? Long story short, just live in the moment. So having learned that, I know a couple of things. One, don't trust your memory. <laughs> Hire a sketch artist. Number two, you have to just wait and see. While, number three, be prepared. And that's just in a larger sense. You don't show up to the hair salon with no hair. That's stupid. You gotta get it cut. If you don't have any hair, just go to the laundromat, clean your clothes. And then number four, which is a little notation or a little um, asterisk, and then we'll go to the footnote. Have fun. Life is short. And then of course we come to the defense. Why should I, and not, not these other girls, Roxy, Detox, and Alaska, why should I, instead of them, be crowned RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star? Why should my picture be hanging in the Hall of Fame? Well, first reason, I'm very photogenic. But most importantly, my angle is this. I don't have mathematics on my side, never have, don't care about that. But what I've done that these girls have not done in a very short amount of time is demonstrated a considerable amount of improvement. They've had years out in the professional world to do music videos, to create products, to design outfits, to perform in ensemble casts. All these challenges are directly relatable to our professional experiences as drag race girls, right? Or do you consider the backstory? Do you grade on a curve? It's all up in the air. It's Rue's decision and I have no doubt that she'll make the right decision. But I will tell you this, and this may be controversial, although it doesn't have to be. I need you to read between the lines and not put words in my mouth. I want you to put pie in there. I'm hungry. I think the right person will win. But that person is not necessarily the person I want to win. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. This has been actually like a really fun experience for me. So much so that I don't care if you got anything out of it. <laughs> I was like, that's true. Take this time to revisit some of my back catalog. I think we have some behind the scenes footage for you to chew on. I am feverishly, and actually this time, I've been saying this for about five years, but I am in fact feverishly working on a solo show that does involve a lot of other people. So just a show. That's gonna be called Help Me, I'm Dying, unless my manager doesn't like that, in which case it'll be called something else. You can donate to that right here. I'm asking for a very modest contribution, nothing over $40, unless you're Ellen Barkin and would like to contribute 50. So donate or drag me for asking for money because that's totally fine too and I accept that. Go in peace, have a wonderful day. Don't trust your memories unless you got a sketch artist. Thank you so much, goodbye. Don't forget to subscribe. I want some glue. No, I don't need any glue. <coughs> you know what? Put it right here. No, you know what? Fuck it. it. Fuck it. <laughs> it's not interesting for me to to inarticulately sob about issues that are not clear to anybody else besides myself. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs>